was a lot of pretty good music in the 90s. For me, personally, my favorite artist of the 90s was Nine Inch Nails. Or, just for lack of a better word, Trent Reznor, since he practically is Nine Inch Nails. And without question, my favorite album of theirs, even to this day, is probably the Downward Spiral. Because I cannot listen to the Downward word Spiral without going back to high school. Now, I wasn't like the typical depressed high school teenage student. But as a teenager, I pretty much kept to myself. I mean, all I really did in between class was write my poems, which I was just starting to get into at the time in my sophomore, junior year of high school, was writing poetry. And I remember in 94, hearing this song that kept playing, the video for it kept playing on MTV. And I guess this would be where I make the joke where MTV used to play videos, blah, blah, blah. But it was for the song Closer. Now, I was already familiar with Nine Inch Nails to a little bit of extent. I was familiar with uh, Head Like a Hole. That was probably the one song of theirs I was familiar with the most. But Closer was very different. It was basically a sex song, but it was sex with a really dark twist to it. It sounded obsessive. Like the person was more obsessed with the person than just wanting to fuck them. And of course, this was the song that basically broke Trent Reznor Nine Inch Nails wide open. Now you almost can't go to any strip club without hearing Closer being played at some point at the night. But when I bought Downward Spiral, it wasn't Fuck Me Like an Animal. That was the first thing that caught my attention. It was the sound of pain. Because the first thing you hear when you play Downward Spiral is the sound. It sounds like somebody's being slammed up against a wall. And being hit over and over and over again until finally you get the song Mr. Self-Destruct which is basically like someone's split personality talking it's it's like a conversation with yourself and that really caught my attention it was like all of your negativity all of your your anger you feel when you're young it just being directed right back at you like a mirror image. That was the song that immediately grabbed my attention. The next few songs that got me was Hearsay, or Hersey, or however it's pronounced, which is basically one man's debate about religion. It's him challenging the status quo of what he should believe in spiritually versus what society's telling him he should believe. Your God is dead and no one cares. If there's a hell, I'll see you there. It's full of anger. I mean, this is stuff that really once you're a teenager and you're questioning the world around you and you're starting to gain your own identity 
and figure out where you fit in. These are songs that clearly speak to you. The Downward Spiral could almost be seen as a concept album detailing a person's slow, gradual descent into madness and despair. And Closer, when you take the album as a whole, Closer is almost the one little stopgap in between. But it's talking about sexual obsession. How there's this person, they may not be good for you, spiritually or emotionally, but damn it, you just cannot let them go sexually, physically. You need them, you crave them. Which ultimately is another form of madness because no good can come out of that kind of obsession in the end. It's short-term stimulation, but in the long run, it just tears you down spiritually. A warm place. There are several songs that just further drive home the point of hurt and pain. Leading into Big Man with a Gun, which is basically like a mock rape fantasy. I'm a big man and I got a big gun. Got me a big old dick and I like to have fun. Maybe put a hole in your head just for the fuck of it. It's, it's that aggressive male fantasy of how you view someone, not as a person, but just as a thing to give you some kind of release, whether it be sexually or physically by threatening them. All you see them is as is a vessel for you to get your rocks off. It is pure anger. And I've always found it curious that the same female following that just loves Closer, they think it's a nice naughty little song. Yeah, fuck me like an animal. They skip over Big Man with a gun. They don't see that same, same aggression, which can be a turn on, on one hand, can flip immediately. And then you have rape, then you have violence, then you have abuse. A lot of people kind of missed the mark on that one. And Big Man with a Gun, once it reaches its final mark, the album stops for a moment to catch its breath. At least on the CD. You see, when I first got this album, I got the cassette. Yeah, I'm really dating myself with cassette. So side one of Downward Spiral ended with Big Man with a Gun. And side two began with A Warm Place. And you needed that. You needed that, those three minutes to just catch your breath. To think, to ponder. When I was in art school at the Art Institute, I used music from the Downward Spiral, mainly a warm place, the instrumental, a lot from my music videos. It's very haunting, very serene. You know, a lot of people don't give Trent Reznor credit for coming up with some very somber, yet beautiful music. They just think of him as, you know, the aggressive guy, or, you know, songs that make people want to take their clothes off and fuck. But it's those quiet moments, like with a warm place, that get me the most. And you needed that quietness, that moment of reflection, to think about where you've been in your life before 
we rev it up again with Eraser. We're right back where we started from. Wondering where, where did all this lead to? How did we get here? How did we get so lost? That same feeling of loss you feel as a teenager when you feel like nobody understands you, not your parents, not your classmates, nobody can really understand who you are and what you're going through. And it just gets further and further along down the hole until finally we reach hurt, literally. When I was young, hearing this song, I did not realize it was about someone's heroin addiction. I just took it kind of at face value and thought it was somebody who reached the end of their rope. Which is fitting because it is the final song on the album. You started out with Mr. Self-Destruct, person facing their demons, talking to themselves, facing all of their negativity, and eventually winding up thinking about killing themselves. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. I focus in on the pain, the only thing that's real. That, again, really got me as a teenager. I wasn't quite sure why I was hurting, other than the fact that I just felt alone. I felt like nobody got me. Now, of course, this leads to the obvious comparison between the Trent Reznor version of Burt and the Johnny Cash version. And to me, they're totally, two totally different songs. When I hear Johnny Cash's version of Hurt, I'm thinking of an old man who is looking back on the entire scope of his life, the good and the bad, and reflecting on some of the damage he's done to his life, but looking for salvation. In Johnny Cash's song, I see reflection and salvation. In the Nine Inch Nails version, I see the hurt, no pun intended, but I also see the longing for salvation. When I hear Johnny Cash's version of hurt, I get the feeling that in the end, he finally found peace. In the Nine Inch Nails version, I see the want for peace, the struggle for it, but it hasn't been attained. It's still some far away place that you're traveling to. This album, Downward Spiral, will forever remind me of that period in my life when I was younger. And I just felt like nobody got it but maybe Trent Reznor. Which is why now he could play a show. He's one of the few artists from the 90s who doesn't have to play to little 200 seat clubs. He can fill an arena because lots of people got it. People my age who grew up with it still get it. People younger who will find this album will immediately relate to it. It is a timeless album. There's a lot of ugliness to it, but there's also a longing for beauty, for acceptance and for understanding. And this is why Downward Spiral is an album means a lot to me.